Hello and welcome once again to the Story Shed. And I have another story for you, of course. This one is called The Spring Unicorn. So sit back, relax and enjoy the tale. Far away beyond the widest oceans lies the enchanted land of Faria. The people of Faria are always happy, for the summers are long, the autumns are beautiful, the springs are a joy, and the winters, although a little cold, are short. It is such a beautiful place, and the crops grow so well that there's little for the Farian people to do but enjoy themselves in the sun. So they rarely work and instead spend their days playing, having parties, making music and telling each other wonderful stories. Now some people might say that the people of Faria are lazy, but they wouldn't care because they're just so happy. One year it wasn't like that. That year in fact the people of Faria were far from happy. Indeed they were very worried, for although spring should have arrived weeks ago it hadn't. None of the winter snows had yet gone, the lakes had not thawed, the birds were not building their nests, and the buds of the flowers in the mountain meadows had failed to open. It's not good enough, said the king. Something must be done. He summoned the members of his great council to meet at the palace. Whatever can be wrong, he asked them. What has happened to our spring? The men and the women of the great council, except for one, shook their heads, for they did not know the answer. But the oldest and wisest member stood up. It's because the spring unicorn, the bringer of spring, has not visited Faria this year, he explained. Without his arrival, there can be no spring. The king and the other members of the council looked at each other and frowned. But why has the spring unicorn not come to Faria? asked the king. Doesn't he like us any more? I think it could be because we're so busy enjoying ourselves that we never thank the spring unicorn for all he does for us. It could be that he thinks we're lazy and we don't deserve to live in such a wonderful place, suggested the wisest council member. But we must put that right at once, said the king. All the people in all the land must leave their warmth of their homes and go out and start to work immediately. They must start, um, they must, um, what's that thing? They must, um, uh, um, the king wanted to describe the things his people should be doing when they went out to work, but the trouble was he didn't know anything about work, so he didn't know what to say. In the end, he simply said, uh, they must, you know, they, they must, um, they must, um, they must bustle about being busy and doing, um, work work and things like work and yes busy busy so because the king had told them to the people of faria went to work at first they didn't even know what to do then when they looked at the word in the farian dictionary and found out what was involved they didn't like the sound of it and grumbled a lot among themselves but as time passed they found that they quite enjoyed being busy they shoveled the snow from the paths of their gardens. They cleared snow from the roads. They repaired leaking roofs and even filled all the holes in the roads. And they still laughed and sang the way they used to before the spring failed to arrive. And the king ordered that they should all go to work. But it still kept on snowing. The lakes didn't thaw. The birds failed to build their nests. And the flowers didn't bloom. What can the matter be now? asked the king of the oldest and wisest member of his council. Perhaps the spring unicorn doesn't know how hard we've been working, said the wise man. Well, the, the, the spring uni unicorn must be told, snapped the king, stamping his royal foot. Every day messengers were sent through the land to stick up posters, announcing that whoever found the spring unicorn and explained how hard the Farians had been working would receive all the gold they wished for. The problem was that 
nobody knew where the spring unicorn lived. And so nobody felt brave enough to go and seek him. Nobody, that is, except for a poor musician who was known as the Whistler. I'm fed up with the winter and I've got nothing better to do, so I might just as well go and look for the spring unicorn, thought the Whistler. So he picked up his flute and set off in search of the spring unicorn. He travelled far and wide, playing his flute to keep him cheerful on his journey, and as he played, the notes of the flute danced before him, leading him on and on across the widest oceans, over the highest mountains. I shall follow the notes of my music wherever they lead me, he told himself, and at long last he came to a valley where no one had ever been before. It was the home of the spring unicorn. You have no place here, boomed a loud voice. How did you, a mere Farian, find your way here? I played my flute and followed the notes, explained the whistler, and then he demonstrated with a quick tune. His music was so beautiful that within minutes a whole herd of magical unicorns appeared and danced before him. When he finally laid down his flute, one of the unicorns trotted forward and introduced himself as the spring unicorn. Why are you here? the spring unicorn asked. Because you failed to come to Faria this year, explained the whistler. Ha! cried the spring unicorn. I couldn't be bothered to come because the people of Faria are so lazy they do not deserve my beautiful springs. But what you say is no longer true, explained the whistler. We are no longer lazy and we still have time to be happy telling each other wonderful tales and playing beautiful music while we work. With that, he picked up his flute again and began to play the sweetest tune the spring unicorn had ever heard. Maybe you're right, said the spring unicorn when the tune had come to an end. I tell you what I'll do. Providing you play your beautiful music on your journey back to Faria, then I shall accompany you and we'll see if the people there are no longer lazy. Can I fly on your back? asked the whistler hopefully. No, said the spring unicorn. If we fly, then the journey will be over too quickly and I won't have time to listen to all the music I want you to play. We shall walk back the way you came. Oh, bother, thought the whistler, whose legs were really aching from all the miles he'd walked on his journey to find the spring unicorn. Even so, he agreed to do as the spring unicorn asked. So the whistler returned the way he'd come, and throughout his long journey he played the most beautiful music, so that the spring unicorn followed every step of the way. Eventually they arrived in the mountains above Faria. Look, said the whistler, pointing down to the village, see how hard the people are working, and it, indeed they were. Some were shoveling snow from their gardens, but as soon as they finished, more snow fell to replace it. Some were clearing snow from the roads, but as soon as they stood up to rest their backs, more snow was covering them over. Some were mending leaks in their roofs, but as soon as they finished, more snow was falling to make new holes. Indeed, they are working, admitted the spring unicorn, but are they happy in their work? Listen, said the whistler. The unicorn listened. Faintly from the village came the sound of someone laughing. Someone else was whistling. Someone else was singing. Oh, yes, said the whistler. I think you can say they are happy. I believe you're right, agreed the unicorn. You should have your spring back again, and I shall continue to bring a new spring year after year, just so long as the people remain happy and contented and do not ever become lazy again. That's how it was, and that's how it still is. Spring comes every year to Faria, and the people remain happy and contented. They work harder now than they did before, but, but never too hard. There is still time for them to party and make music and tell each other stories. And the whistler 
Well, he turned down the king's offer of riches in favour of becoming the spring unicorn's helper, which is why every year the Farian spring is always heralded by the most beautiful music anyone has ever heard. And that's the end of the story of the spring unicorn. We hope you enjoyed it. Please get in touch with us at the story show blog at gmail.com. That's the story show blog at gmail.com. And for the time being, be well and safe and bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.